Hello there, it's Mr Neil here. In this video, we're going to be looking at debugging techniques, which is part of the testing topic within the Higher Computing Science Software Design and Development Unit. We are required to describe and exemplify a range of debugging techniques, including dry runs, trace tables and tools, breakpoints and watch points. In this video, we're going to perform some dry runs using trace tables and looking at watch points as well. In the description to this video, you'll find these two worksheets that we are going to work through. Let's start by talking about dry runs and trace tables. Dry run testing is usually a paper and pencil exercise, where the developer takes on the role of the computer and manually steps through an algorithm using sample data, and they record the value of the variables in a trace table as they progress through the algorithm. So the trace table is used as a way of demonstrating what has been stored in the program. So let's have a look at an example of a question that utilises a trace table. So here we have Catherine who creates an algorithm which will search the call total array and return the largest value present. So before I answer any of these questions, the first step that I always ask myself is which of our standard algorithms is in this question. Have we got a fine min, a fine max, a linear search or a count occurrence? Now in this case we are asked to return the largest value. So that is the clue to me that this is a find max algorithm. So at the end of this algorithm we should know the maximum call total value. The question says a trace table is used to record the change to a variable at the corresponding line number. Complete the trace table below. Now it's already partially completed for us because as we can see on line one of our program we set the call total to be 21, 165, 102, 30, 177 and 33. On the next line, line two, we set the maximum to call total zero. So the first value in our call total array is 21. So that becomes our maximum. We then on line three, start our counter from one to five. So our counter starts at one. Now we move on to line four. If call total counter less than maximum. So in these questions, we can write on the question to make it easier for us to see. So in this case, our maximum is 21. Our counter is 1. So the value in call total counter at 1 is 165. So we've got 165 less than 21. So, in this case, 165 is not less than 21. So on line five, no action takes place, and we would go back up to line three, where we would increment our counter to two. And for the contents of this question, this is where we would stop. And what you would find in an SQA exam paper is a subsequent question asking, explaining why the algorithm is incorrect. Well, we know that in this algorithm, we want to find the maximum value. So in this case, 165 is greater than 21. So line five should be be executed. So the algorithm here is incorrect because it does not find the maximum value. In fact, it will actually find the minimum value. So in order to correct this algorithm, we have to change the comparison operator from a less than comparison operator to a greater than comparison operator. And this algorithm would then work. Moving now on to question two. Pause the video now 
and have a go at completing the trace table. Once you've completed, start the video up and we'll go through it together. A program has been written to find the location of a requested value in a list. However, the program does not return the correct location. The algorithm that's responsible is shown below. Now, like previous, the first thing I'm going to do is identify the standard algorithm that we have. Now, in this question, we've been told that we have to find the location. So that makes it a linear search. A trace table has been used to record the changes to the variable when stepping through the code. Complete the information in the table below recording the value assigned to the variable for lines 2, 3, 4 and 6. Line 5 does not change a variable value and so is not included. So if we look at line 1, the first thing that happens in line 1 is that we set the data set to 72, 34, 19, 73, 52 and 58 and that is recorded in our trace table. We then move onto line 2 and on line 2 we set the location to minus 1. We now move on to line 3 and on line 3 we set the target to 72. Now moving on to line 4. We are told for counter starting at 0 to the length of the data set. So in this case we update counter to 0. Now whilst line 5 is not included in our trace table, this does not mean that we can't look at it. So in this case we know from line 3 that our target is 72. We know that the data set we're at position 0. The value at position 0 in our data set is 72. So we are checking to see does 72 equal 72. And it does. So we're going to go on to line 6. And on line 6, we are said that the counter should become the same value as the location. So our location is minus 1. So our counter becomes minus 1. So there we have completed the trace table for the purpose of this question. Now like previous, we would have the follow-up question. In this case, we would be asked to explain why the location is never correctly given. And the reason the location is never correctly given is that instead of updating the location, we update the counter. So in order to fix this algorithm, line 6 should read set location to counter. Now moving on to breakpoints and watchpoints. Breakpoints are set to stop the execution on a specific line of code. And at this point, the contents of that variable can be examined. Whereas a watch point is assigned to a specific variable and they can be used to monitor the content of a variable. They could also stop the execution of a program when a particular condition is met. Let's have a look at how we could use a dry run with a watch. The following function finds the maximum Pokemon happiness level. The function is tested using the following values. A watch point is placed on the max happy variable. Complete the table showing where the watch point is triggered and the value of max happy when the watch point is triggered. So whilst it might not be important for this question, again the first step I always go through is to identify the standard algorithm that we're looking at. So because we've got max Pokemon happiness level, I'm going to assume that the standard algorithm as a fine maximum. We are told in the stem of the question that a watch point has been applied to the max happy variable. So let's identify every time the max happy variable changes. 
So it changes on line 25 as there's a value assigned to it. And it changes again on line 28. So within our trace table, we are going to record every time it changes and the value that it changes to. So we start on line 25, where we set the max happy to the happiness at index zero. So in this case, the happiness at index zero is 97. We then move on to line 26, where we repeat with a counter from zero to the length of the array. So we're going to progress through each item in our array. Starting at zero, if the happiness at position zero is greater than max happy. So in this case, we know max happy is 97 and the value at position zero is also 97. So 97 is not greater than 97. We then look round and look at max happiness at position one and check to see if 84 is greater than our previous happy, which it is not. So again, we look round once more and look at 103. 103 is greater than 97. So we would go on to line 28, where we update max happiness to our current position. So 28 max happy becomes 103. We keep going through our loop, this time looking to see if 120 is greater than 123. It is, so on line 28, we'd update max happy to 120. We go round the loop once more to see if 76 is greater than 120, which it is not. So we've correctly identified each time that max happy changes within this algorithm. Which point? So here we have got a function that finds the maximum Pokemon happiness level. And we're told it's been tested using a pre-set list of values. And we're told that there is a watch point placed on the max. So the following function finds the maximum Pokemon. So the following function finds the maximum Pokemon happiness level. The function is tested using some speed. The function is tested using the following values. A watch point has been placed. Moving on to another question. Pause the video now and see if you can complete the trace table for the watch point that is placed on the occur variable. So looking at this question here, the first step, again, I would identify the standard algorithm. So because this question states that we are counting the number of days that our visitors were greater than 3000 and the temperature was 20 degrees or warmer, I can work out from that that the standard algorithm is a count or currents. From the question, we have been told that a watch point is placed on the occur variable. So within the function, I'm going to identify each time that the occur variable changes. So it will change on line 7 and it will also change on line 10. So we're now going to step through the program and identify and record what it changes to. So on line seven, we set a car to be zero. On line eight, we find ourselves with a fixed loop that is going to go through each of our values. We then on line nine have an if statement to see if the current value is greater than 3000 and the current temperature is 20 or more. Should both those conditions be true, we would then increase a car by one. So let's look at each value in the array to see if they match our criteria. The first value, 6723, is greater than 3000. The first temperature, 20.3, is greater than 20. So therefore, both these are conditions are true. So on line 10, we'd increase a car by one. 
our next pair, 2,821, is not greater than 3,000. Therefore, we do not increase our curve by 1. Our next condition, visits, is 3,093. Greater than 3,000. Temperature is 18.9. That is not greater or equal to 20. Therefore, we do not increase occurrence. 3,210 is greater than 1,000. 20.1 is greater than 20. Therefore, we increase on line 10, occur by 1. Our lastly, 2,978 is not greater than 3,000. We can see using this test data that the occur function is updated three times within this program. So in this video, we have looked at a range of dry runs using trace tables and watch points. Hopefully, you're now more confident in this aspect of the Higher Computing Science course.